All right, welcome everybody to Standard 4. We're going to be working on uh, Standard 4. All right, uh, funny start. Um, standard 4, students prove basic theorems involving congruence and similarity. As you can see here, Standard 4 is a big one. It goes all the way from problem 13 to problem 20. So uh, the best way to approach this, let, let's um, come up with some of our, uh, our, our theorems. Uh, congruence can be proven by side, 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 angle, side, Angle, side, angle, 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 side, and everyone's favorite, hypotenuse leg. That is five different ways to prove congruence. Similarity can only be proven three different ways. That's side, 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 where all three sides are proportional. That is angle, angle, where the two angles are congruent. Uh, and there is side, angle, side, where there are two proportional sides uh, with a congruent angle included between them. So we'll start with number 13. Which triangles must be similar? So the word similar tells us we're looking for side, 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 angle, angle, or side, angle, side. So two obtuse triangles. Well, it says obtuse. This one's kind of obvious. It, it can't be the answer because, you know, if this angle is 130 degrees and this one's 100 degrees, they have nothing in common. So that's definitely not enough to prove similarity. Two scalene triangles with congruent bases. Um, scalene just means three different side lengths, so this one could be scalene, and this one could be scalene. And even if these two bases are congruent, it's certainly not enough to prove uh, similarity. Here are two right triangles. Well, this is a right triangle, and this is a right triangle. Certainly not enough to prove similarity. Two isosceles triangles with congruent vertex angles. Well, now that's interesting. That's saying this isosceles one, where this side is congruent to this, and this isosceles one where this side is congruent to this. If their angles are congruent, then what we've got is side, angle, side, similarity. Bam. So that's got to be your answer, D. Okay. Which of the following facts would be sufficient to prove that triangle ABC and triangle DBE are similar? So here's ABC, here's DBE. Um, what we need to notice is that they contain the same uh, angle. Angle ABC is in both triangles, therefore we already have one angle. So we're probably looking for side, angle, side, or angle, angle, because we're given one angle. So let's see here. If CB, no, sorry, CE and BE are congruent, well if these were congruent, would that have anything to do with these sides? No. It really wouldn't do much of anything. So that doesn't prove anything. If angle ACE is a right angle, well, that's also not enough because we don't know anything about this angle, so it wouldn't give us anything. So that's also not a good answer. If side AC and side DE are parallel, so this is interesting because we've got to look at this. If these were parallel, then this would be a transversal. And if this was a transversal, then these would be corresponding angles. If corresponding angles are congruent, then what we have is one congruent angle, another congruent angle, 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 similarity. That looks like it's going to do it. Let's just evaluate D to see what's, what D has to offer. Angle A and angle B are congruent. Well, that's weirder because this angle, again, only belongs to one triangle, so it has nothing to do with the smaller triangle, so it doesn't prove anything. The answer has to be C because it's the only one that can prove similarity. And that's 14. All right. Let's look at 15. 15. Parallelogram ABCD is shown below. Which parallelograms, or sorry, which pair of triangles can be established to be congruent to prove that angle DAB is congruent to angle BCD? So let's try to see what it's really saying. It's trying to say that DAB is congruent to BCD. So DAB is this triangle here, and BCD is this triangle here. So if we're talking about the angles, DAB would be this angle, BCD would this, be this angle. So I think we've already kind of answered our question. If this triangle was congruent to this triangle, this angle would be congruent to this angle. The reason for that is that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So uh, triangle ADC, let's look at this, ADC that doesn't contain the angles that we're talking about, so that's not going to work. Triangle AED, AED 
again doesn't contain this angle so that can't be what we're trying to prove uh, triangle DAB now that looks promising here's DAB this can go into triangle BCD we'll see if these two triangles right here and right here are congruent then these angles have to be congruent again because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent so it's going to be C and to evaluate D triangle DEC again doesn't contain either of the angles we're looking for so that can't be the answer alright number 16 if triangle ABC and and XYZ are two triangles such that AB over XY equals BC over YZ which of the following would be sufficient to prove that they are similar well let's take a look here ABC and XYZ it's always a good idea to start drawing ABC XYZ so I'm gonna make little marks to say that AB corresponds to XY and that BC corresponds to YZ. We're not saying they're similar or, or that they're congruent, we're saying that they're proportional. But if we go back to our similarities, um, similarity, if you're given two proportional sides, what you're looking for is an angle. And specifically, we're looking for the angle between them. So if I have this angle congruent to this angle, what I have is side, angle, side, similarity. So angle B congruent to angle Y will be our answer. Okay, number 17. In parallelogram FGHI, diagonals IG and FH are drawn and intersect at point M. So let's see, FGHI, and I always say draw everything. FGHI, the diagonals intersect at point M. Uh, which of the following statements must be true? So FGI. Uh, must be an obtuse triangle. F, G, I, um, not necessarily. The way I drew it, it looks obtuse, but F could have been this way. It does not need to be obtuse. Triangle H, I, G. H, I, G must be an acute triangle. Well, as you can tell right here, my version is obtuse, so that cannot be the case. Triangle F, M, G. F, M, G must be congruent to triangle H, MG. That's also unlikely. Um, FMG does not need to be congruent uh, to HMG as this side does not need to be congruent to this side. Uh, that is not the case. Triangle GMH. GMH must be congruent to triangle IMF. That is true because opposite sides are congruent. Diagonals bisect each other. Therefore by side 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 we have congruent triangles. So D is going to be our answer. Again, opposite sides are congruent. Diagonals bisect each other. Therefore, by side, 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 these two triangles, GMH and IMF, must be congruent. So that's D. Okay, which of the following best describe the triangles shown below? All right, so this one, we're going to see some things, but we're going to add some things as well. After all, this is 90, this is 60, this is 8. So that would mean that this angle up here has to be 30 degrees. And this is a 30, 60, 90, so we can use our 30, 60, 90 rules. If this is 8, this has to be 4, and this has to be 4 square root of 3. And now let's look at this one. If this is 30 and this is 90, then this one has to be 60. After all, that's just triangle sum theorem. Then if this is 8, this is 4, and this is also 4 square root of 3. So clearly these two triangles are completely congruent. Um, you can go side, side, side. You can do pretty much any proof. They're congruent through and through. So, are they both similar and congruent? I think that's, that's acceptable. After all, they're similar by angle, angle. So that works. Um, similar but not congruent doesn't make any sense because they're definitely congruent. Congruent but not similar? That's just not possible. If they're congruent, they are inherently similar. And neither similar nor congruent, obviously nonsense. The only answer that makes any sense here is A. Okay, number 19. Which of the following statements must be true if triangle GHI is similar to triangle uh, JKL? Well, think about this. If they are similar, then corresponding parts have to, corresponding angles have to be congruent and corresponding sides have to be proportional. So, there's a lot you can tell, 
and it's nice to add the stuff in. So the two triangles must be scalene. Uh, that is not true. They could be they could be equilateral. They could be uh, they could be isosceles. Uh, the triangles must have exactly one acute angle. Um, that's not even possible. Um, every triangle has at least two acute angles, so that's nonsense. Uh, C. At least one of the sides of the two triangles must be parallel. Um, also pretty much nonsense. Uh, the relationship between the two triangles uh, is irrelevant. And uh, the idea of them being parallel is also irrelevant. The corresponding sides of the two triangles must be proportional. Well, that's pretty obvious. That's what we have right here. In other words, GH is pro proportional to... Uh, JK as GI is proportional to JL as HI is proportional to KL as definitely the answer. Last, which method listed below could not be used to prove that the two triangles are congruent? Um, prove that all three sets of corresponding sides are congruent. Well, that's another way of saying side, side, side. So that can be. We're looking for things that could not be. Uh, prove all three sets of corresponding angles are congruent. Well, there is no angle, angle, angle congruence proof. Angle, angle is enough for similarity, but without a side, you can't tell if they're the same size. You can only tell if they're the same shape. So I'm betting on this one. Prove that two sides and an included angle of, the tri of one triangle are congruent to two sides and an included angle of the other triangle. Well, that sounds like this, side, angle, side. There is a side, angle, side proof. So that cannot be the answer. And prove that two angles and an included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and an included side of the other triangle. Well, that's angle, side, angle. There's also an angle, side, angle proof. So the only one that is not a known triangle proof is angle, angle, angle. So that has to be the answer. And there you have it. There's standard four. Probably uh, one of the more tedious standards. You really got to pay attention to... Uh, to all your relationships and stuff, but um, rewind if you need to. Good luck with it, and I'll see you in uh, Standard 5. Thanks.